What's up, Loopers? This is Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com and I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. And I'm here to show you today how to use Ableton Live to customize a multi-track. So you might maybe purchase a multi-track from Loop Community and maybe you wanna customize it. Maybe you wanna change the, where the chorus starts or maybe you wanna do two verses instead of one verse. I'm gonna show you how in Ableton Live you can take those stems that you download, bring them into Ableton Live, customize it, and then export your new tracks. So let's look at it now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use what's called arrangement view. So to get to arrangement view, you can hit tab, or you can click the little button in the top right corner that has horizontal bars. And this is arrangement view. And this is a great view for customizing audio or recording audio if you make your own tracks. So the song we're gonna to customize today is called Open Up the Heavens. So I'm gonna drag in my stems, first of all. So I'm gonna bring in the click, and you wanna make sure you bring it in all the way to the beginning. So let me drag that back. I'm gonna bring in the cue. And what you could do if you wanna get really organized here is you could rename these. I would recommend that to what they should be. So this would be cues. Um, and then now you can bring in the rest. What you can do is you can highlight everything holding shift and then hold command to deselect the ones you don't want and then drag them all into live. If you hold command, it'll drop those tracks in vertically, which will save you a lot of time. You'll also notice that it created tracks for every single audio file we brought in. Now, while, while Ableton Live is loading those tracks, I'm gonna go ahead and rename these to what they need to be. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna type in acoustic. If I arrow down, I can go to the next track and I'm gonna just rename all these tracks. This is gonna be important um, when we are exporting these tracks later. So electric three, this is the kick, loop, organ, pad, percussion, a lot of tracks, snare, toms. All right, so that's it. So it's worth renaming all those because later we're gonna need that to be organized. So. Let's go ahead and hit play. And I'm gonna turn on the Ableton click. Now, you'll notice that the tracks are out of time with the click. And so that's a major problem. There's a couple things you wanna make sure you do before you do this. One is make sure in live preferences, if your tracks are completely out of sync with each other, make sure in live preferences that auto warp long samples is turned off. Next, if your tracks are not lining up to the click, it's because they're not lined up to the grid inside of Ableton Live. And you can always, you can actually visually see that if you zoom in, and I'm looking at the click track here, it's not lined up to the grid inside of Ableton Live, and it should be. So before we make any edits, you wanna make sure that you do this. So set the original tempo up here uh, to Ableton's grid. So the original tempo of Open Up the Heavens is 99. So I'm gonna change the tempo in Ableton Live to 99. And you'll see all those click, uh, those click tracks lining up perfectly to the Ableton grid. And now that we're on the grid, we can make precise edits. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and map out the song so we know where in the song sections are. So I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna hit play. Intro, two, three, four. Okay. So we're gonna click this little button here in the top right corner that says set. And what it's gonna do is it's going to add a little marker or a little flag that I can rename to anything I need it to be. So I'm gonna rename this to intro. And now let's keep moving on and let's find the next one. I'm gonna hit play. Okay, this is the verse. I'm gonna hit set button to drop a marker and let's rename this and we're gonna call it verse. Now, if you wanna have a keyboard shortcut for this, you can actually just go to key, and I'm gonna map A to be set. So that means anytime I press A, it's gonna drop a marker. So to do this really quickly, I can just look at where all the cues are, and I'm just gonna drop a marker by pressing A, just like that. And you can see it's dropping flags at every one of those section markers. So drop them, you can do the whole song, all right? There, we've got all the song. Now we need, to, we need to name those, and I can just go ahead and press play before it. Pre -chorus. Two, 
All right, I'm going to right click and rename. This is the pre chorus. chorus. This is the chorus. So you can do this pretty quickly. Intro. Rename intro. Verse two. This is the verse. And let's just do a couple more. Pre chorus. Two. Chorus two. Ableton Live makes it pretty easy to do this. All right, chorus, and let's just find the bridge. Intro. Okay, the intro, and then I think this drops into the bridge. bridge two. Okay. Bridge. Let's actually just keep going, why not? Intro two. Here's the intro again, because this is actually the section I want to jump, I want to chop up. Two, chorus. All right, we're almost done, just a few more. Chorus, outro. outro, and then I'm guessing that last one is the end. So let's rename it and call it end. One, two, cool. Three. So now we have the entire song mapped out, and that's important for when you want to customize these tracks. What we're going to use now is this is called the loop bracket, and it just sits at the top of arrangement view, and you can drag this anywhere you need it to be. And there's a couple of things you can do with it. You can use it to delete time meaning you could just delete a whole section and it'll shift everything over. That's important because, let me show you what would happen. I'm going to actually just collapse these so we have more screen real estate. If I were to just say, say I wanted to delete this verse and I could highlight it and hit delete. Well, the problem with doing that is that all my tracks here, there's a huge blank space now. So I could move my tracks back like this, but check it out all my markers, are, they didn't move with it. So we don't really want to edit the tracks like that. Instead, we want to use the loop bracket. So I'm going to bring this loop bracket in, and I'm going to go ahead and um, just adjust it so that the beginning of it is the beginning of the verse, and the ending of it is the end of the verse, like that. And then I'm going to right-click on the loop bracket and choose Delete Time. So it's going to slice out that entire time section, and it moved all my tracks back and the markers. So that's an awesome tool for doing this. Now let's just say that I want to actually do two intros at the very beginning. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and go over here and highlight the intro, and I'm going to right-click and choose Duplicate Time. It's going to take that time, and it's going to make two of them back-to-back. Now, the only thing you're going to have to probably edit here are the actual cue tracks. So let's look at that. So let's hit play to see what the cues sound like. Intro, two, three, four. All right, so right here we want it to say intro again. Let's see what it says. First, two, three, All right, it doesn't. Four. So it's because we duplicated the time and that cue was there. So I'm going to just roll this back like that. And let's see what that sounds like. Intro, two, three, Great, now we have four. the intro cue again. What you could also do is just highlight this and hit delete, and you could just copy. Just right click. You can just highlight this, do command C, and then paste, and move the cue to where it needs to be. That's another way of doing it. Intro, two, three, four. So you will have to adjust the cue tracks. But that's how you can do that. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's do this again. So down here for the bridge, let's just say I want to do uh, two more bridges. Actually, let's just do one more bridge. So I'm going to highlight here, go to right click, go to duplicate time. Again, let's just make sure the cue is correct. Intro no, it's two. not. So let's just click this and drag back. Bridge awesome. Two, three, four. All right, and then I also want to just get rid of this intro after this. I want to go right into the chorus. So I'm going to highlight this, right click, delete time. And let's make sure the cue is correct. Intro, two, three, it's not four. because that was from the previous section. So let's just drag this back. Chorus, Perfect. Two, three, four. All right, so now I have a customized arrangement that works with how I want to do it. Now, if I want to export these now as my new arrangement, I'm just going to do a Command A to select everything. I'm going to go to File. Export audio, 
And this is why it was important to name those tracks. It's because when it says, what are you going to export? I'm going to choose all individual tracks. We're going to export them as WAV files. I'm going to hit export. And what it's going to do now is it's going to export. I'm going to choose what folder to put this in. We're going to call this open up custom arrangement. And I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call, what we're going to do is I'm going to call this um, open up the heavens. And I like to name all my files the same. So underscore 99, which is the tempo, underscore D, which is the key of the song. And then I'm going to leave, I'm going to put an underscore, but I'm going to leave the rest blank because what's going to happen is when Ableton Live exports these, it's going to put the track name like acoustic or bass to the end here of this file. So now it's going to export all of my stems as new audio files that are properly named. And once it's done exporting all those, I can then drag those audio files into my new Ableton Live set and use my custom arrangement of little open up the heavens. It's that easy to customize a multi-track in Ableton Live. Have fun.